In this video, I'm going to be going over everything that you need to know about Peloton Power Zone classes, the FTP test, and at the end of the video, I will give you all of my best tips and tricks on how to improve your FTP score. And we're gonna do it right now. My name is Colin Jenkins, and this is Connect the Watts, where we make guides just like this, as well as reviews and news updates for Peloton and other connected fitness communities. So if that sort of thing interests you, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification so that you get notifications and don't miss out on any of our latest videos. So first off, let's go over what power zone classes are and why you might want to consider taking them on your Peloton bike. Unlike other Peloton classes, power zone rides are focused on holding individually prescribed power outputs to achieve a specific training goal for the day. Sometimes you'll be tasked to hold and accumulate longer times at lower power outputs, and other days you'll be tasked with holding very high outputs with periods of rest in between. Each of the power zone classes are customized for you since you're going to be following along with your own personal power zones. And this personal customization is why taking power zone rides often leads to better results than just taking regular classes. There are seven power zones and each zone represents a target output range, which I'll talk about more when we discuss your FTP score. During a power zone ride, the instructors will cue specific zones which direct you to maintain your corresponding personal output range on your bike. But in order to know your personal power zone ranges, you'll first need to take the power zone FTP test. Your FTP, our functional threshold power, is the highest power that you can maintain for one hour on the bike. On Peloton, we estimate our FTP by taking a 20 minute maximum effort test, which to be honest is a little nasty, but it's a lot more fun than taking a 60 minute max effort test. There's two methods to take the FTP test. The first is to start and follow the Discover Your Power Zones program. The other method is to search FTP on the bike. When using this method, it is important that you select one of the available FTP warmups, as you will likely not be able to get an accurate FTP score without a solid warmup beforehand. After your warmup, select the coach you want to take the test with, and in 20 minutes, you will have your own personal FTP score as well as your personal power zones. Also after the FTP test, your power zone score should automatically be recorded and inputted into your profile. And from here on out, you will see your own custom power zone bar with different colors for each zone at the bottom of your screen for all classes. If you don't see this, don't worry. We just have to update your FTP score on the Peloton bike manually. To do this, go to the stats page of your FTP test and take note of what your average output value is. Then click on your username in the lower left corner, then click the red gear symbol and navigate to the preferences tab. Under power zones, click edit power zones and custom value. Now enter your average output from your 20 minute FTP test ride and click OK. And also make sure display power zones is selected. After that, you should be able to see your power zone bar in your very next class. Now the seven zones for power zones are zone one, which is very easy and considered active recovery. Zone two, which is a little harder, but you should still be able to hold the conversation. Zone three is where conversation is still possible, but now it's a bit difficult. Zone four is challenging and a pace where conversation generally stops, but is something that you should be able to hold for around 20 to 60 minutes. Zone five is very difficult and is a pace you should only be able to sustain for about 10 to 15 minutes. Zone six means that you are pushing the pace and is something you really should be only able to sustain for a few minutes. And finally, zone seven is pretty much going all out and a pace that cannot be sustained for very long at all, generally under one minute. And as you continue training with power zone rides, you will notice each of these zones becomes easier and easier. And if so, you may wanna consider retesting your FTP score again to see if you can improve your score. Generally, I suggest that you retake your FTP score around four weeks after your initial test and after that second time, you can test a little less often. Most people choose to test every six to eight weeks, but it just depends on how much you are focusing on your FTP training. Now, Power Zone rides are currently taught by Matt Wilpers, Dennis Morton, Olivia Amato, Christine Darocale, and Ben Aldis, and are generally broken into three different categories, Power Zone Endurance, Power Zone, and Power Zone Max. Power Zone Endurance rides focus on lower intensities and intervals in zones two and three traditional power zone classes that are labeled as just power zone class can include any of the zones one through six, but will typically have a focus on zones four and five. And power zone max classes can include any of the seven zones, 
but typically have an emphasis on zones five through seven. To get started with power zone training, I do suggest taking the Discover Your Power Zone program on the Peloton. And there is also an Improve Your Power Zone program on the Peloton. It is great that you may want to take in the future as well. Outside of those two programs, you will need to sort of figure out your own training schedule and program, but I'll give you a few ideas to get you started. If you really want to make power zone training your primary focus, you may want to consider joining a group like the Power Zone Pack, which is an online group that challenges members to follow a program on Peloton that they've put together. This is great as not only do you have a plan, but also the support of others who are following the same program as you. And the way I like to implement power zone training is I'll implement one to two power zone endurance rides each week. And then the other one or two rides that I do might be the regular power zone or power zone max classes, or if there are other classes in other categories I wanna take, I generally do those instead because I know I'll be spending a lot more time in the higher zones during those classes. Or if I'm taking one of Kendall's metal rides, I can expect to be in zone six or seven pretty much the entire time. Now as promised, let me go over some of my best tips to help you improve your FTP score. First, and this is not gonna be a problem for everybody, but try to avoid overdoing it. I have seen so many people doing power zone programs and adding on like five or more additional hard rides each week. And while you might think that more is always better, it's definitely not the case. And often you can actually undo a lot of the improvements that you would have made by following a power zone program by doing too much extra hard work. Now it's not a problem if you wanna do some more riding, but generally I suggest spending a lot more time on those other rides in the lower zones one and two. Tip number two is to taper your volume and intensity during the week prior to your FTP test. When you train hard, you are breaking yourself down and giving your body signals to build a more fit version of you. And by giving your body a bit of a rest with lower volume and intensity, you might be amazed at how good you feel on that test but also how much you improve on future training since you finally gave your body a chance to recover and adapt to all of the training that you have been putting into it. Tip number three is about pre-workout nutrition. Nutrition is big and it doesn't just start the day of your test. It starts at least the day prior. Make sure that you are eating enough and potentially adding a little bit more carbs into your diet just to make sure that you have completely full glycogen storage. Yes, it's only a 20 minute ride, but you'll be surprised how much you can burn through when pushing as hard as you need to during that test. And prior to the test, try out different food strategies. I know some people perform at their best on a completely empty stomach, so it's better for them to do the test early in the morning or to eat at least four to six hours prior. Whereas other people I know do tests like this better when they have a little bit of food in their stomach, so they generally have a small meal a few hours before the test. Just experiment and find out what works best for you. Tip number four is to know your numbers and have a strategy. You gotta know what your previous best FTP test was and its average pace so you can set yourself up for success. Because here's the thing, you might feel really, really good during that first minute or two of the test, and because of that, accidentally go too hard if you don't have a plan set. My personal suggestion and strategy is to go about 5% lower than your previous average FTP score and then build up during the first five minutes to at least meet your average FTP score of your previous test. And after that, just keep building up as long as you feel like you can maintain and keep going. And there are various ways to build during this test and the coaches do a great job of walking you through it, but just don't get too confident too early and blow yourself out by starting with too aggressive a pace. Tip number five is using positive self-talk. It's easy to think that you can't do this when you're starting to hurt or if it gets hard, but top athletes learn how to use positive self-talk to reach new levels. If it hurts, good. You should have expected that. So tell yourself prior to the test that when it hurts, that's a good thing and it means that you're pushing yourself to your limit and you're just gonna smile and tell yourself whatever mantra that you want to to keep yourself going and just don't give up until the very end. It sounds silly, but it can make a huge difference towards the end of the test. The biggest and most obvious tip is that if you want to improve your FTP score, you're gonna need to spend some time doing power zone training. If you spend a lot of your training time doing running or weightlifting or anything besides biking, you might have a harder time improving your FTP score. And it's not like you shouldn't do those things. You definitely should. But during periods where you're really focused on just improving your FTP, 
you should consider dialing those other activities down a little bit, either in terms of volume or intensity. So that way you can help direct your body to making the most adaptations to what is going to be most beneficial on the FTP test on the bike. And make sure to check out this video for seven reasons on why I love power zone training and three reasons why I don't.